Um, I just want to start, you know, obviously players uh, coming back to campus this week. How much are you looking forward to that? And just kind of what do you expect to get out of this, especially with, um, you know, with your four newcomers here? Uh, well, it's the same thing that we try to do every every summer school session. You know, we um, um, first, you know, we want to get them acclimated to um, getting up in the morning and going to class. And um, this summer, um, one, unlike last summer when we didn't even have this session, uh, two, they are actually going to be in a classroom. So for our sophomores, that's kind of a big difference. <laughs> um, so that's number one, you know, get acclimated to going to class, being a college student, um, getting, you know, getting a head start, you know, two classes, six credits, you know, um, that's one. Two, we get them acclimated to um, our basketball culture, you know, um, what's it like in the weight room? What's it like conditioning? What's practice like? What's uh, an individual instruction session look like? Uh, what's, what, what's watching film look like? Um, so, you know, the other stuff, um, you know, what drills are we running? You know, what kind of offensive concepts are we putting in? Um, you know, those things are kind of secondary, I think, but at the same time, you know, they're important. Joe Zone. Gino, good morning. Congratulations on your new contract. What a commitment. Thank you. Um, what's what's getting harder to do coaching practices or coaching games um i i i think coaching practices is harder than ever it's not as much fun as it used to be if you're not careful um practices used to be the most rewarding part of of coaching for uh, for most coaches that I know of, um, now uh, practices are are very very difficult because um, um, kids grow up today wanting to play. You know they want to they just want playing games because that's what they do. You know the culture is playing play games. The, you know uh, you know if you talk about you know, who goes to basketball camp, you know, where you learn how to do drills and, you know, how many, you know, how many kids are more involved, let's say, with their high school coach than they are with their travel team. And how much do you practice with your travel team? So, you know, a lot of kids work out, you know, they, they go to these trainers, you know, that never existed. And these trainers, you know, they're working one on one with these kids. And now you get them and, you know, you're working two on two, three on three, four on four, five on five, you know, you got to up and back, you know, you got to think about this and that and the other 17 different things are going on. And then you have to be able to maintain that intensity level, you know, for an extended period of time and that concentration level for an extended period of time. And that proves to be very, very difficult for a lot of these kids. But then as soon as you play five on five, boom, 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 or you get into, you know, a game, they want to play. They want to win just as much. They want to compete just as much. Uh, it's getting them to understand the preparation part that's become much more difficult. Thank you. Alexa. Hey, Gina, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm good. good. Um, does it, is it starting to feel more like a normal season as opposed to a COVID season? Because even last year, especially with the timing being off with the normal summer session, it just seemed like, or not, I guess, not having a summer session. It was just, even from the get-go, such a weirdly disrupted year. And I'm not sure what the protocols look like, how much might be similar or different, but are you getting the sense that may, that maybe things are kind of going back to normal yet? Yeah, you, you are. You are getting a sense of that. Um, 
you can feel that there's a difference in the air. Uh, people are a little more relaxed walking around. There's more of a, you know, a looseness about, uh, you know, engaging with other people. They're, they're, you know, we're all vaccinated, so we're all very comfortable uh, being around each other. Uh, and there's still some people, don't get me wrong, that that have not finished their, their vaccinations yet. Maybe have one um, and, or, you know, they didn't get their second one yet. Um, you know, that, that still wear masks and still are very conscious of, you know, the, the social distancing and all that. And, uh, you know, and we're, we're obviously, you know, we're okay with wherever you, you happen to be at that time. But, um, you know, when our players come back, all but a couple of them are going to be fully vaccinated. So we'll be able to, you know, come here and get started uh, as opposed to, you know, two guys are allowed in the gym. There's chairs set up over here. Don't touch this. Don't touch that. All the things that we thought, you know, were, uh, were part of the protocol. Um, so, you, you, you know, you are starting to feel like, you know, we're getting ready for practice. You know, our planning is, is now we're planning for our whole team to be here instead of, you know, hey, we've got three sessions today, three groups of four, you know, or something like that. Um, you know, recruiting starts June 1st. Uh, we're out on the road in July. Uh, we're making plans of where we're going to go, who we're going to see, where we're going to see them. Uh, so, yeah, um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, at work every day. Our whole staff is here. Um, you know, last year it's, all right, what am I going to do today that I didn't do yesterday or that's different than yesterday? And, boy, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. It's going to be really exciting. Um, you know, the most exciting part of my day was, you know, what kind of wine am I having today, red or white? Um, that was fun in the beginning, but that's no way to live. I mean, it is. Don't get me wrong. I'm looking forward to a time when that is my only decision. But it feels great, man. I'm telling you, it it, it feels like a million, like a, like a million times different. And I'm sure it helps too. You've already said that you're really excited about the group of kids you're bringing in. Um, so combination of that plus back to normal, just really happy feeling high. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there's always because you you recruit a lot of high level players. You know, you, you're always going to be dealing with. Uh, you know, like Galia is not going to be here the whole month of June probably because she's with her national team. And I hope she makes the Olympic team. And I hope she's not around all of July either because she's in Tokyo. Um, you know, she's got a great opportunity with that with that team. And she's going to learn a lot. And so I'm, you know, really excited for her. Um, you know, Nika had a chance to be with, uh, to go train with her national team and said, nah, I need to be, you know, I need to be in summer school. I need to be with my team. You know, um, she's in a different situation. Um, you know, AZ's going to be traveling the whole month of July with the 19 and under team. Um, you know, Paige had surgery, so she's not going to be a part of our workouts other than, you know, watching and uh, learning, I hope. Um, you know, Piath had some surgery, um, you know, um, so she's, uh, she's not going to be here. She's going to be here, but she's not going to be working out. Um, so, you know, there's still, um, you know, there's still issues that you got to deal with, but overall, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, um, uh, you know, what it's going to, what it's going to look like. Um, even though it'll still be different, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to what it's going to look like. Carl? You know, congratulations on the contract. It's a long way for um, 
from 29.9 and signing at Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, well, I liked it better. Nobody knew Nobody knew what I was doing, and, and you know, I didn't get as many – I didn't get as many snarky phone calls from my friends or texts from my friends. And, you know, um, back then they all felt sorry for me. Now they all, they're all pissed at me. <laughs> Two part question. Um, what do you feel about the way the transfer portal has played out, playing out crazier, more, you know, less crazy, better than you thought? And second part of the question, uh, why is Dorka Juhas a good fit for UConn? Well, Dorka is a good fit because she's a skilled, she's a skilled player. You know, she, she does the things that good basketball players do. You know, we like, you know, we like multidimensional players. So you get a six, three, six, four kid that can, you know, that can pass, that can, you know, get to the basket that can make shots, you know, knows how to play. I um, mean, you're getting a, you know, a versatile player who was first team all big 10. So uh, it's not like you're getting someone who's untested and unproven and, you know, Hey, she can really shoot, but, uh, or Hey, she's a really good rebounder, but, you know, so hopefully, you know, she'll just fit, um, perfectly in whatever role uh, it is that she, you know, that she ends up for herself. Uh, the transfer portal is a mess. It was going to be a mess from the beginning and it's a mess now, and it's going to be a bigger mess each and every year. Um, a lot of these kids are delusional. Um, uh, you know, they, uh, uh, they had, they have so many voices in their ear I think there's a, there's like a thousand kids in the portal. I didn't, you know, I don't keep track of the latest numbers, but somebody told me that. Somebody said there's like a thousand kids in the portal. Someone also told me there's like 200 kids that have not been contacted by anybody. And now those kids aren't going back to their original schools. And now they're going to find themselves worse off than they were where they were. So, yeah, the transfer portal is great for, um, you know, a kid who knows where they're going, which means they were thinking about it a while back, who has a place ready for them, a spot ready for them, uh, which means they've been thinking about it for a long time. Um, you know, but for some kids, the transfer portal is great. But for a thousand kids to be in that portal, that means there's something wrong with the system. There's something wrong with the recruiting system. There's something wrong with the culture of college basketball today. There's something wrong with the entitlement that happens to exist today. And there's something wrong with this idea of, you know, student athlete welfare, that everything should be done to accommodate the student athlete with no regard whatsoever to the coaches who work their ass off to recruit these kids in the first place, work with them, help them get better, make them the player that they are. And then they up and leave with no consequences whatsoever. Well, isn't it crazy that there's going to be kids that are going to be playing on their third team in three years this coming season. And then you have a team like Syracuse who right. the whole team went into the transfer portal. Right. I know, I know, uh, a, a a coach on the men's side uh, who uh, they have a kid that's at their fourth school in four years. So tell me that it's every school's fault. Tell me that it's every school's responsibility to make every kid happy, whatever, you know, but here, here's the flip side of that. If we, as coaches, just call a kid in and say, look, you know, I thought you'd be a lot better than this. So I'm taking away your scholarship. We would get crucified. But yet a kid can just up and leave for no reason whatsoever. Other than I just don't want to be here anymore. I don't like it here anymore. 
Okay. So, yeah, there's a time when it's absolutely positively appropriate for a kid to, uh, to have to make a change. And believe me, I've been on both sides of it, where kids have left here and where kids have come in. I've been on both sides of it. And, you know, every time that we're in this situation, I always ask the kid, what's wrong with you? <laughs> That's my first question whenever a kid wants to transfer. I say, what's wrong with you? You're at a great place. You're starting. You're playing a lot of minutes. You seem to be, you know, really successful. So there's got to be something wrong with you. <laughs> and then when they answer me, uh, if I like their answer, then I, I go forward. If I don't like their answer, then I say I'm not interested. But a thousand kids? Ugh, a thousand. It's unbelievable. And now it's, um, you know, with the one-time transfer, um, not having to sit out, uh, don't get me wrong. I, 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 I don't disagree. I don't disagree. But there's got to be something wrong with the culture if, if, if it's this bad. On both ends, on the kids' end and the coaches' end. There's got to be something wrong. We'll go to Dom and then Mike. Yeah, Gino. Um, so I want to ask you, uh, you know, I know yesterday you spoke to the baseball team before they, they left, and a couple of weeks ago you spoke to the softball team. I know you've I believe you've done similar things with the hockey team. I was just wondering – is that something that's new for you or, or something maybe we're just seeing it for the first time because uh, it's on social media, but is that, is that a new thing for you? And, and, you know, what kind of prompts you to do that? Uh, it's not new. It's not necessarily new. Uh, and maybe more, uh, you know, more out there because of social media. Uh, there's been times when coaches have asked me to, Hey, can you, you know, uh, come talk to my team about this, that, or the other thing. And there's been times when I've asked a coach. Um, I remember as far back as when Dan Orlovsky played. Uh, I think they were getting ready to go to a bowl game. And uh, I just wanted to give him a hard time. That's the only reason why I wanted to talk to him. I wanted to say, you know, God damn it, you know, you better play your ass off and – come back here with a win, you know? I mean, you and Diana are good friends and she never loses. Get your ass in gear, dude. You know, I just wanted to give him a hard time about stuff. But uh, for the baseball team, you know, honest to God, I, I wanted to congratulate them for winning the for winning the Big East and to remind them, really, of uh, all the people that came before them and the field they played on and the conditions that they played in under and that they're fortunate to be playing for maybe the best, you know, baseball coach in America and, and the best coach at the university of Connecticut. And, and, um, and I went to the games this weekend and, and I, I just wanted to say, man, I, I, I'm really, really, really proud to, to, to be associated with you guys. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, uh, the, the softball team was, was the same thing. I mean, they didn't, you know, these guys have the most amazing facilities now. I don't know if you people have, have been up here to see the new stadiums, the softball stadium, the baseball stadium, the, the practice facilities that they have. It's just incredible. And, um, you know, I just wanted to remind them that, you know, the kids that came before them didn't have any of that. And uh, the guy who was World Series MVP didn't have any of that. So, you know, you, you, you can win championships and you can be the best player in, in the league and um, come from UConn. And so I, I enjoy that kind of stuff, you know, and, and sometimes I learn more than, than they do because of, you know, being around them. 
I, I plus I love baseball. You know, I'm a baseball. Yeah. I'd much rather I'd much rather be playing baseball than basketball. To be honest with you. You know, what's the common thread of coaching? You know, keeping in mind that you're really, you know, you're coaching kids as opposed to maybe coaching basketball players. What's the common thread of coaching that kind of forms that message for you that can resonate for a softball player or a, a soccer player or a baseball player? You know what I noticed? The two things that I noticed about both of those programs, softball and baseball, is the incredible relationships between the coaching staff and the players and between the players themselves. And that, to me, is a common thread that coaches who have great relationships with their players and as a byproduct of that, the players have amazing relationships with each other. They end up playing for each other. They don't play for UConn. Mm. You know, uh, uh, like I say to my players, if I took UConn off your chest and put, you know, uh, St. Mary's, you know, a Willimannick, would you change how you play? No, because you'd still be playing for the guy next to you. And when you, you, you can feel that. Uh, and in baseball, you know, it, the, the common thread, baseball, softball, the common thread is it's such an individual game. You know, it's such an individual game. You know, and I wanted to re remind them, too, that you can be in the Hall of Fame in baseball and never play on a winning team your entire career and make the Hall of Fame because it's a numbers game. Baseball is a numbers game. How many home runs did you hit? How many RBIs did you have? How many wins do you have? How many strikeouts? But in the end, the joy comes from being around your teammates and winning and winning championships. All the numbers in the world, guys would trade that for, for a World Series championship or a Big East championship or an NCAA championship. So, you know, that's a common thread that – You've got great kids who are great individuals. And then how do you convince them that it's still about the relationships and about winning as a team and, and the joy that comes from that? I, I, I mean, I'm telling you, I love baseball, man. Yeah. I love baseball. Well, it seems like you, you, you delivered a kind of a, a don't be afraid to fail message to, to both of those teams yeah I think sometimes you know uh, judging from what I've seen of, of my players and uh, players in general kids today you know um, they suffer from a lot of anxiety stuff this fear of failure the, the social media has put on mm -hmm. kids that you're either the best or the worst there's no like hey that kid's pretty good so when you do one thing good, you're, you know, you're, 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 you're a hero to the world because it, beco it, goes, it goes viral. You do one thing bad, your team loses, you strike out, you know, with the bases loaded. You, you know, you make an error to cost your team the game. You know, you're a bum. And, and kids are more th than ever before self-conscious of that. Um, you know, and, and, and I think that gets in the way of winning. They start playing not to lose. They start playing not to be embarrassed. And, you know, like with the baseball team, it's, it's the same with our team. They just proved over a period of five months, whatever, that they're the best team in the Big East. Now they got to go prove it again in a span of three or four days. You know, and, and, and that's the challenge. And, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it's very similar to what is asked of us most years. You know, you win the regular season, but, yeah, now that's not good enough. you got to go prove it again for three or four days. And, and you got to know going in that you're the best team and you got to play like you're the best team. And you can't be thinking about anything other than, than winning. That's why I love the Fedco kid <laughs> on their team. He don't think about anything, <laughs> you know, he's that old school. Like they throw me the ball, they throw the pitch. I hit it. They hit it to me. I catch it. 
You know, <laughs> he makes it, he makes it pretty simple. <laughs> I love that kid. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Gene. I appreciate yeah. it. Okay, Mike. Thank you. What's up, Gino? Hey. Um, I'll turn you back into a basketball coach here for a moment, if you don't mind. <laughs> uh, Caroline Ducharme, could, could you just share your thoughts on what you've learned about her as a player and a person recruiting her the last couple of years and maybe what you're eager to learn moving forward as she's part of your program and how she fits in? You know, uh, Caroline's an interesting um interesting individual in that uh, she kind of, believe it or not, was under the radar a little bit because she had gotten injured and didn't play. And, uh, you know, she doesn't go to one of the schools that's, you know, predominantly putting out, you know, all American players. Um, and at, when you first look at her, you're not quite sure whether – you know, she can, she can play at the highest level, but then when you, when you play against her, you watch her on the court, um, you know, you, you can see, you know, like, wow, you know, that, that kid's really good. Um, and what I like the most about her is that during the recruiting process, you know, I had to say to her a couple of times, listen, we have no idea what our situation is. We don't, we, we have no idea what our scholarship situation is or what, you know, where we are, you know, and, and if, you know, if, if you can hang in there with us, I think it's going to work out great. Uh, but if you need to make a decision and go, you know, someplace, I, 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 I truly understand. And the kid's like, no coach, just be, you know, be honest with me. Tell me where I stand. And then I'll make my decision based on that. And I, you know, I told her, I said, I, I, I just need to sort some things out here. Where are people going? Who's coming back? Who's not, you know, blah, 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 blah. And this was two years ago almost. And, and, um, you know, I knew all along that, uh, I wanted her to be here. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really, really excited about, about her coming here. She's a tough kid. She's a tough competitor. Is there a player you, you kind of uh, that she reminds you of stylistically? And she said when she was hurt, at one point she totally transformed her shot. So she's kind of changed and evolved at different stages. Um, I don't know what what you see in, in her now as in her style or, or potential. Um. I don't know that she reminds me of anybody in particular. Uh, she's kind of an edgy kid. You know, she's got a little bit of an edge to her, which I really, really like. Uh, she's not quite as tall as Ann Struther, but yeah. she has a lot of the characteristics that Ann had about, you know, being able to play a lot of different positions and being able to score a lot of different ways uh, and really picking things up really quickly. I mean, those people that remember Ann when she was a freshman, I mean, she was unbelievably good in the NCAA tournament and we wouldn't have won the national championship without Ann. Um, and, and we had a great career here at, at UConn. Um, and now is making a great life as a, a nurse and, and a mom. And I think she's on her third or fourth child. Um, but I, I would say that's that that's a good comparison, like an Ann Struther type um, that can do a you know a, a, a bunch of things pretty well, and and she does shoot the ball great. That's the one thing I can say about the kids coming in. They they put the ball in the basket, you know. They make shots, which you know can't go wrong with that. Thanks. Yep. Go so to Dan and then Charlotte. Hey, Gino. I just wanted to follow up on what you said about PF. What did she, what was the surgery that she had, and how long are you expecting her to be out? 
Uh, it was non-basketball related. So it was something that she had uh, needed to take care of. Uh, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's been with her for, for a while now since, you know, since high school. And uh, she just thought it'd be best, you know, get it out of the way and take care of it. And uh, so she'll be, she'll be out this, this summer, uh, you know, like Paige, but it's a, uh, it's a non-basketball, it's a non-basketball thing. And it's, it's, um, it's, it's more of a, a precautionary, you know, she didn't have to have it, but at some point in her life, she was going to have to have it. So get it over with now. And then kind of along the same lines with Paige, did her ankle that she had surgery on affect her a whole lot this season? And are you expecting her to be part of any workouts this summer? Uh, did it affect her this season? I think after the Tennessee game, when she aggravated it, um, you could see there were times when it was a little bit tender and ginger and it would pop up. But overall, you know, she dealt with it pretty well. She's terrible at going in the training room and doing her rehab. So I think she learned from that and she's smarter now. Um, but as far as any workouts this summer, uh, no, I don't, I don't see her participating in any, any workouts. Thank you. Charlotte. You do now. Nice to see you again. Hope all is well. Y yeah, you too. Thanks. Uh, it's kind of actually on that with the sophomores that will be practicing this summer. What are you kind of looking for them to get out of their first, I guess, real summer session and kind of the improvements you're hoping for them to make and just having that like real set time. Well, <laughs> for sophomores, uh, well, Paige isn't going to be here. Uh, Aaliyah isn't going to be here. Uh, Piat isn't going to be here. Uh, so there's not much going on other than, um, um, you know, Nika and, and Mir, uh, unless I'm missing somebody. Um, I think that's about it. Um, so we're, we're hoping that, um, you know, they just, get better individually and build on some of the things that they learned uh, and they contributed to last year. Um, but it's, it's one of those weird things where, uh, you know, two kids that could be potential starters for us this year um, are, are not going to be here. So it's, it's, it's more about, you know, trying to create a culture for the in incoming new players and um, and getting our, our our seniors to um, to kind of you know get get themselves in in senior year mode and this is the beginning of their senior year you know for real starting you know June first. <clears throat> with Aaliyah not going to be physically there and, and Paige injured, how does that, I guess, just kind of, I know you mentioned it's going to be more adjusting to college atmosphere at first, but how does that impact kind of just the roster with Paige not even being able to play and Aaliyah not there, if that's something you've thought about at all? No, because we don't have any games. So I'm not worried about, like, who do we play, you know, June 20th. So to me, this is a great opportunity for, um, you know, some, some of the younger kids and some of the players that maybe wouldn't get as many reps or wouldn't get as much opportunity uh, if Paige was here or if Aaliyah was here. Um, so I, I, I think it's a, in, in some ways, yeah, I would love to have the, 
you know, Paige and, and, and Aaliyah, but uh, Aaliyah's playing and, and, and it's going to get better. You know, Paige is, is going to be better. You know, she's going to be healthier. I miss, I'm going to miss not having Piath because I think she took a big step forward and she really, really improved, even though a lot of people didn't get a chance to see it. So I, I wish she was part of this, but she's not. But I think it's just an opportunity for some of the other players. It's an opportunity for us as well to see, like, hey, what will we look like, you know, if uh, if we didn't have these two guys available? Um, so I, I, I'm i looking at it as a positive. <clears throat> we'll go to Vicky and then Carl to wrap it up. Hey Gina, um, hey. I was I was wondering. Um, it it seems like such a short time since the the season ended. It's like less than a couple of months. Like when you when you start this new session with with the new kids, is it just a hundred percent? Um, you know, a fresh start. Uh, looking ahead, or do you do you say like, okay, this is what we need to do different from last time we were together, or do you? this is what we need to learn or, or is it just a completely fresh start and all the new kids you're going to be incorporating and just a new attitude and just forget the past or do you, do you learn a little bit from it or? No, I, I think there's gotta be a, um, a carryover, um, you know, from what, what we learned, you know, we were 28 and two and we, you know, we went to the final four. So that means something. And, uh, that we've got to build on that. And at the same time, you know, we, as coaching staff, you know, we're, we were talking yesterday about one of the things we want to do is like, Hey, what did we learn from last year? What did we really, really, really like that we want to keep doing and do better? What didn't we like that we need to get rid of? What do we want to add? that we didn't do at all last year um, that fits our style of play and it fits our, our, our players. So that's basically what, you know, what a lot of this is all about, you know, um, and, and creating a culture f- because it's a new team. And I really am anxious to see, how our three seniors handle, uh, you know, how the season ended. I, I would like to think that they feel like there's some, you know, there's some residue left over there that's not good for them. And that they've got some, they got some unfinished business to take care of. Carl? Kino, what was your reaction when Shay told you that Vanderbilt was interested in her or she was interested in Vanderbilt? And how, from your perspective, did that play out? And was this the right place and right time for her? Well, you never know what the right place and, and the right time is. You know, uh, and that's one of the things we talked about. I said, uh, you know, how did you know when it was the right time to have a child? You don't, you just do, you know, how do you know when it's the right time, you know, to get married or to change jobs? You don't, you just do, uh, because you think it is. Um, so, you know, I, I think Shay, uh, at, as the season went on and, and towards the end of the season started to, you know, get some feelers like she does every year. And, uh, you know, there comes a point where you just say, all right, you know, if the right opportunity comes along, that sounds like it's the perfect opportunity. I'm going to take it. And the Vanderbilt thing came up at the, you know, the 11th hour, so to speak, uh, as a surprise to everyone as, uh, in, in that meaning in that the job was open, not that 
it was a surprise that Shea was in the mix because uh, Shea was in the mix the uh, the previous time before they hired uh, Stephanie White. So I'm not surprised. Uh, you never know if it's the right time, but uh, it's never too early, but it, sometimes it can be too late. And this was, this was the right time. And it was the right decision for Shay personally, her and her family. And it was the right decision for her professionally um, to go to a, a program that's been successful, that's had winning tradition in the past. And she's got her hands full in the league that she's in. So, um, all those suggestions she's made to me for the last 25 years that she's been around. <laughs> I want to see how that goes when she's got to make those decisions. I can't wait to talk to her about that. Hey, Roger, if you have one quick question, then we'll wrap it up. Hey, Gina, how good is USA basketball for kids? And, and do you do you mind that they're away from you for the summer when you could be having them or that they learn different things, especially like um, Amari DeBerry? I mean, what, what did she get out of that? No, I think USA basketball is great. Uh, I think it, playing for your national team is amazing. And uh, it's a great opportunity for any kid. And one that you should never pass up unless you have, you know, specific reasons to. Um, and I know Paige is really, really uh, disappointed that she didn't get a chance to, to, to do her USA basketball thing this summer. Um, and I know that Amari is going to learn a lot uh, with each and every USA basketball uh, event that she either tries out for or team that she makes. Uh, and the same with AZ. Um, so <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that they're, you know, that my players are part of USA basketball. I'm thrilled that uh, Ali is part of the Canadian national team program. Um being coached by different people, being in different systems, learning, you know, a different way to play, uh, competing against uh, older, older, more experienced players can only make you a better player. So I, I've always thought that that's a huge positive for, for our players.